Global Foundries um, made a big announcement with GM. It kind of hits on like four or five different things, Pat. I'm going to let you go first, but a uh, bunch of angles here. Yeah, so uh, GF has really been on the move uh, for the past uh, couple of years. And quite frankly, they didn't get the credit they deserved until we saw the chip downturn, right? Uh, people's brains uh, seem to be fixated on, you know, uh, kind of bleeding edge uh, digital with uh, pr the latest processors and GPUs. Uh, but what we learned with the pandemic and the supply chain challenges is, you know, you can't ship that $50,000 car without that $2 uh, analog part to, you know, either help drive the RF of that 5G or 4G modem or uh, power uh, uh, conditioning. You know, power conditioning is an analog uh, function and every electric car out there literally has thousands of, of these power conditioners to be able to have the most effective uh, performance, so-called performance per watt, uh, mile per watt um, uh, outcome. And those are just a, a few of the things that GF brings to the table. Uh, they're also industry leader in silicon photonics uh, related to, compared to uh, companies like uh, TSMC. And then finally, you have the China uh, challenge or you know the balkanization of the semiconductor market where GF uh, clearly plays actually on all continents. Uh, so they're almost a, um, um, you know, a safe bet uh, even for uh, the Chinese. So what's new? Uh, as we saw, we had cars that couldn't be shipped because people couldn't get a 50 cent uh, semiconductor. Uh, you had uh, car companies that were shipping units without radar, uh, sorry, without um uh, without radios, right? Odd little weird types of things. Um, and, and, and what we've seen, and, you know, we've seen uh, GF sign up a couple automakers now, but General Motors signed up uh, a long-term direct supply chain uh, agreement uh, for the U.S. produced uh, chips uh, for them. And again, you know, not to say we've seen this before, but no, we've seen this before, and it's just smart. And I think it's a testament to Global Foundries that they didn't pick uh, either Tower or uh, TSMC. Yeah, so uh, I think there's some really interesting things that this also insinuates, right? The timing of this announcement with Chips Act money at stake has to be considered right now. Um, I've written a few pieces as of you, Pat. I wrote a Market Watch piece kind of saying, where's the Chips Act money going to go? And I believe it's going to disproportionately go to Intel. Intel's stepped up, raised its hand, and they're building these massive, uh, the massive uh, Columbus Superfab. They're going to kind of win on the, we're going to be the leading edge. But let's be candid. You said this really well. A lot of the delays, a lot of the problems, and by the way, one of the parts of the market that has not caught up even still has been the automotive space, meaning where we have a glut of chips to build PCs and smartphones and uh, data center uh, servers, we're still catching up from what's gone on in the automotive space. Inventory supplies are still down. Um, the second thing, Pat, was the streamlining of parts where they're going to basically work with GM so that a single part bin can handle more of the needs. So, you know, different, different sensors or different uh, controllers, you know, can be basically multifaceted and used for different purposes in a vehicle. So instead of having to have 100 uh, say you have 100 semis in a vehicle and having 17 different parts to do it now they have 100 semis and maybe they'll have five parts and so if they can manufacture more volume they would be able to deliver uh, more successfully for the customers the third is this is being done in upstate new york and that, that's why i really point out the chips act thing was the commitment is to do, do the manufacturing in upstate new york which means it's good for the U.S. So with Global Foundries kind of always being one of these companies, it's like, are they U.S. based or are they not U.S. based, right? They're up, they're, they were backed by a sovereign fund in the Middle East, and there's always a little bit of question as to, you know, where do they stand? They are U.S. listed company with a U.S. based CEO that runs the company here in the U.S., and they are bringing more manufacturing and more jobs to the U.S. So I think this could be a real plus for their sort of positioning to get additional funds in the CHIPS Act as well. I mean, what's more apple pie than GM? 
in terms of like a US based company that's making a bigger commitment to using this US manufacturing to try to, you know, uh, sway the policymaker. So was that intentional? I can't speak to that. But what I can say is very good timing, given where we're at with appropriations. And of course, a very good strategic move to streamline the part, streamline the manufacturing and bring more of it home. US has always been better on the lagging than the leading. So our problems longer term to solve leading edge manufacturing are still a real challenge. But Global Foundries fills a really important need with these, Pat, what do you call them, 50 cent part bin that are the difference between cars being manufactured and cars not being manufactured. So good partnership, good announcement for Global Foundries. And by the way, GM is a winner here too.